morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Andrew Campbell, and I'm here to do the Opus 17 Rebellion's Call set review for Lightning. Now, as of this video's recording, the 4th of August, we don't actually have English version of the cards available, so we are going to have a Japanese copy of the card set in the centre, and a English translation to the left-hand side. We've got a lot of cards, so I'm just going to jump right in to Ofjang and Nieng. Now, this is going to cause a lot of really uh, calls, I can imagine, at some point. So, this card's name is treated as both Ofjang and Nieng, additionally. Now, this means, for its special, you can utilise this card, Ofjang and Nieng. Or the previous backups, I won't take the Opus 13, it's slipped my mind at this moment, of Jang, comma, and Mei. So, for total, you could run nine copies, and assuming that this one of these copies stays alive, eight bullets without percussion. So, what are its effects? First one is Dispel, which you choose one character and loses all its abilities to the end of turn. It's quite nice that it targets characters and not just abilities. This can have some unique properties at times. Um, there'll be situations where you want to hit up a backups effect. It can be quite nice to turn off uh, something such as Shantotto, which would give them access to multiple colours of CP. Um, or I think probably the, the funniest one would of course be Chaos or Cosmos in which you could break multiple light and dark cards um, as Chaos slash Cosmos has the ability of allowing them to play multiple of their respective elements. Um, there will be times where making a character lose their abilities are really useful. I think this is the, the lesser of the two but just having it as a single special is not bad. The other special of course is Shield Bash which is a straight up 9k for one card and one lightning CP. So that will hit quite a lot of key numbers. I think the big one is Barret, which assuming they can't power buff him would be a straight kill, which for a 1 CP forward is quite nice. This card will have a bit more to talk about when we get to the uh, a FAMU in two cards time, but as a whole I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 5. I think it's really strong and has great potential but it's got a very high deck building cost and I think it will be just trying to find out at what point running multiple copies of of Jing and Ming is too much. Also it is quite frail so being able to kill it with a Brynhildr is always nasty but thankfully it's free if it won't die to two Bismarck uh, pings. But there, there's just a lot that this card can die from. It's a 1 CP investment, but you are getting what you pay for. Following this, we have Red Mage. And Red Mage is a quite an aggressive standard unit. And it is actually what, in this kind of first line of heroic standard units, which is quite rare. Now, you can pay after, uh, when, when she enters the field, you can pay 2 CP, one of which must be Lightning and break a forward cost 4 or less and on damage 3 you can actually choose which order these effects go off in which there might be a rare situation where you want to target a forward uh, such as Illua or the upcoming Neo, remove it to protection um, and then break it or um, if you're going really aggressively be able to kill a forward and give another one haste so it is quite nice to have a multi-play break forward card. At 5 CP it might be a little expensive. Um, you might get some mileage out if you cast it off Al Cid, uh, either one. Um, for an additional card afterwards, you're not paying the, the 3 CP for the on-entry effect. But it can be quite an aggressive card, and I think the fact of Category 14 might give it more interesting utility than one might think. Um, 
Now there's kind of some talk about using the Booth 14 Xenos, the one that you check. I think it's the top five cards and you add two uh, category 14 characters among them to your hand. Um, being able to utilize that effect to get a couple of copies. Category 14 characters being able to play this red mage, kill a guy and then give that Xenos haste to swing to give other category 14 characters such as this red mage haste afterwards could be a really aggressive play um, I'm going to give it a I'm going to say a 2.5 out of 5 this again this is I'm going to say this is definitely within the about average set of cards if we get some good standard unit support I definitely could see it heading the plane giving haste to other cards kind of be quite nice if you've got an on entry effect uh, or even just need something to attack much sooner than you currently have available perhaps if you can play this at the same time with a bem off k that would obviously get hasted damage free so yeah i think it's good but i am still just waiting to be convinced on how good this card is next up we have a famu and this is where of jang and Bian gets really fun now just to clarify, these searching for the Of Chang and Miang are two separate effects, so you can only Amaterasu one of them, so even if you do Amaterasu her, you are getting some value out of it still, which is quite nice. Um, because the Of Jang and Miang that was revealed earlier is also treated as card name Of Jang and Miang. Um, you can search two copies of that card or one copy of that one and one copy of Mien, for example, the backup. So you can either use that for kind of very aggressive special spam or which I think you might see more look at, especially depending if Lightning can kind of get more consistent cards to become a strong mono deck. Um, as a very efficient backup engine, as I said, you can search the Objang and Miang backups. It can help you ramp out quite, quite, uh, quite quickly. Having a board that can be searched, for example, through the I think, backup Aldo, search a Famu, and then post that searching an Objang and Miang, kind of hitting three backups, um, the one forward but still keeping cards in hand for your second turn isn't too bad especially when you can run it in conjunction with Yugiri upcoming to have probably quite a tight backup engine for very efficient ramp allowing you to kind of have 40 cards well kind of 45 once you take out a uh, sorry 35 when you include the Yugiri and the Famu, so you can have quite a tight back engine. For going back to the Of Jang and Miang special spam, you can dull uh, her and pay 2 CP to get back card name Of Jang or Miang from your break zone and add it to hand, which it's nice if you need the bullet uh, for either the special, it can do that. Uh, whether it's worth dulling her is a different question. I still think she's a fairly decent card and cards that can only get better as they print other of Jang and Yang. I think this will be the last time I say those card names. I'm quite glad because it's a lot of work. Um, I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of a 5. I really like her effect. She can kind of rifle through your deck and quite CP efficient. However, she is very card space intensive you really need to run a quite a steady package to get the most effect out of her and i'm not sure if that is always going to be the most efficient use of cards um she will get better as all jang mings are printed of insane quality but until then i think she'll just be kind of a there may be some special spam decks and some kind of low backup engines using her 
it's just how great they are going to be uh, will be the kind of real kicker of how often she's been played. Next up we have Alice, and I was hoping for some um, Scion support and here we have one. Now she is quite fair for her cost but if you are running multiple Scions um, other than her she will really shine. It is quite good to get a good Alice in standard Scion element. Um, yeah I, I feel she can do some great work. Um, her being able to essentially replace her CP at damage free is quite powerful. Um, good to note that she can get back kind of Yustola specials or even just the fact of you can play her, get back a Yustola and quite possibly get CP to pay off the Yustola from her should be really kept in mind you're kind of deploying two bodies producing an 8 field you really are recovering your field quite well I still think Sions need a couple of more forwards but between her and the Alpha Null printed in water which is really good um, if you haven't watched our water video it, at damage 5 allows you to play a forward of course for less from your break zone so you can play that Alpha Null to play Alice to then get back two cards and you can just recover so well after that. Um, yeah, she's a, a solid 3 out of 5. She, while unfortunately you're not giving all your sound haste like the other backup, I just think her effects really help progress sounds. They really kind of needed better forwards and this is absolutely up there. Next up we have Arisha Al Rashaya and I think she'll be good in sealed because kind of unquestioning removal is always good. You can maybe run it over stale if you're feeling extra brave as I kill one of the forwards you have in the field, but apart from her being an idea that isn't element or backup locked. She is rather fair. Um, other big thing is she is character clash with the Arush. Arush. <laughs> oh, Arisha Arushaya. Backup which searches for type 0. So you've kind of got this horrible name clash. Um, I'm going to say a 1.5 out of 5. She's just too expensive for her effect. Horrible name clash. Next up we have Ixion and I'm quite a fan. Basically, uh, I, I'm a big fan of Rydia Cantrip, so the fact this is break all forwards that cost two or less terrifies me. Um, on top of that, uh, being able to pay free for a total of a 5 CP card that will break all forwards that cost three or less will hit a lot of decks really well. Um, for Avalanche officers being able to hit all of the uh, starter deck forwards and the Tifa will really put them quite far behind. Um, and even in really bad situations being able to hit uh, the Tidus forward uh, from Opus 16 which I'm going to call it pseudo untargetable when you target it you, they draw three and will bounce one of your cards to deck. It gives a card lots of flexibility. Um, I think even against Sky Pirates, uh, although there's not a lot of free cost, being able to maybe break the Dane, kind of on top of hitting their Pinello and the Kite forward, um, is quite strong. Um, they really put them in the back foot for a cheap effect that will kill. Um, the Pinello, which is such a strong part of their deck. On top of that, putting them in the back foot on their kite usage. So if they don't react to it, you kill their kite. If they do react to it, you can target whatever they're targeting um, on the stack of kites and you can remove the target to make his effect fizzle 
which is really, really good. Um, it's a solid 4 out of 5. It is quite expensive for the second effect, but just the fact of it's a really good summon in Lightning. Lightning has had kind of fairly mediocre summons for a while. I don't think you could ask for much more. Um, it's cheap, it's got modal effects, and will hit quite a lot of decks. Um, the fact of it can just kill Palimporum out of the blue. Um, the fact, yeah, it, it's just a great cheap summon. Can't ask for much more. Now we have our first uh, legend and full art for Lightning, and oh. It is a beautiful card. I'm desperately looking for one of these. Now, it really hits a bit of unique um, kind of design space because it's like a card that actually cares about the RFG zone. Now, on entry, it will remove all characters. Key part there is characters, it will not remove summons. This might become slightly relevant for. Uh, another card further on in the set, but it will really hurt a lot of decks that are quite break zone heavy. Um, your Suarez, your Avalanche Operatives, kind of these decks that really like to utilise their break zone, making all of their forwards and kind of go poof, gone, is really quite nice. and. As you remove from play stuff, it gets more and more deadly. As long as it is 10 cards, he becomes a 10k, and that's just really hard to get around. For example, Objang Mieng doesn't kill it by using it, especially they need to have something to top that off, which is nasty. Um, and at 20 RFG's cards, now again, this is cards, not just the characters that he removed from earlier on, so there might be alternative things in there that affect this. Um, but after this, they have to RFG one character at the end of your turn, um, which is quite a cost to pay. This will really quite eat into them, and even for kind of the decks that might that might not mind uh, losing cards and be able to replay a Chantotto, or perhaps in the case of, we'll see, uh, we'll go back to Suarez, um, they might be able to remove an Amber, to play an Amber again, to search for another copy of Madame Adele or a, a Vesvia. It's really going to start eating into their kind of position space they don't remove them. I I feel he's really strong and what can often be quite scotting is because this is an XF, the Opus 13 Mannequins, Lady of Antiquity and Delusionary Warlock will reduce his cost and he can quite easily become a 1 CP forward which is really really nasty um, and that's kind of an Earth Lightning backup core, so th there is definitely something there and should be appreciated. I'm, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5. It has such a unique effect. Um, kind of taking into account the break zone, I think there's lots of... Sorry, it, it, the RFG zone. It will hit a lot of backup um, break zone heavy decks and it's just going to be quite a pain for some decks to deal with. Again, because it's your opponent selects, it's a non-targeting. So yeah, I, I love him, and plus he's got absolutely stunning art. Next up we have Yo, and Yo kind of reminds me a bit of Eloa. Um, him having a similar eye. Uh, I will negate the first uh, summoner ability that targets me this turn. It's quite a, a nice protective effect, can't complain too much. Um, so the way that Eo is meant to be played is with the Glaciella Water Legend. I've seen there been quite a water lightning synergy in this set. Um, and basically you're meant to utilise 
his special, but you've got Taylor to allow you to pay crystals for specials. So on entry, he will gain a crystal, and then you're supposed to use his special through crystals to break a five cost forward and gain another one back. It's quite a strong lightning card. Um, I would say if you don't have got Taylor, it's not worth it too much. I think it's very, very specific. But if you're running Water Lightning, if you're running Luxia, I'd say worth it. Even even as a one-off coffee, he gets a crystal on entry. And assuming as long as, long as you can pay for the special, uh, the lightning cost, and with three crystals, it's quite a... Uh, you're only paying two lightning CP to kill a five cost forward, which is... That's quite nice. Um, Again, I'm going to give him a 3 out of 5. He's very specific, but he does this one specific thing very well. Uh, and it's quite an annoying card to deal with. You kind of have to non-target him. Or, like, start working their head around some funny things of um, targeting him and then trying to use an effect to kill him afterwards. Uh, for no... Amaterasu doesn't target, so it doesn't cancel its effects, so Amaterasu will kill him out front, but I would say he's quite a worthwhile addition to Lightning. Next up we have Orc, and Orc is in this kind of selection of monsters of... We have an on-entry effect, and an effect that you pay for. So, Orc kind of works similar to the the Ewan of the previous set of Choose a Damage Horde break it and then later on when the situation calls you can pay lightning in any element dull them put them into break zone and dull a forward can help you push through i think it'll be really good in sealed environment i just think it's just a little too fair for kind of standard play um it is cute and it is category 11 so there are some synergies you can be picked up with a uh, Star Sibyl if you're doing something extra funky, but uh, yeah, I think this is getting a, a 1.5. Uh, definitely pay attention to it sealed, but it's, it's cute, but not great. Next up we have Sid of Clan Gully, and it's a very basic card. It works as a... Uh, Orcs it was Sid Idolis and I want to say it was Opus 11 or 12, the ice backup of with the exact same effect. Lightning has a bit of recursion, it can help with name diversity. Uh, it's not a bad card, it adds the X burst. It's kind of bang middle of the road, I think it can see play in decks that will want to get cards back from the graveyard. Of Jang Miang, oh dear, I said I wouldn't say that again. Um, I like it for allowing you to use multiple specials. At two point five, it's absolutely fair, balanced, but it's not going to shake up or change anything. There's not going to be a deck people. Ah yes, I can play this now because I've got this set of Clan Gully from the X burst. It just is a cute card that will have very nice backup, but nothing game warping. Next up we have Quan, and Quan has the advantage of being a better card for Sh uh, Shibble. We get the Type 0 Igito Cadet Searcher, which is giving you a good alternative um, kind of backup choice in Lightning for him. And she has a, she has a nice effect of one and dull you can give one of your forwards 2000 power in haste unfortunately it's only if you control one forward which i'll be honest that's a bit rubbish but it's much better than the other target and there might be a situation where this is very relevant maybe not bad if you're recovering after a shantotto being able to play a forward and then give it haste is of note i'm gonna give it a two because it, it's not awful, I think. 40% well, in a university, that's a pass. Not with great distinction, but um, not kind of merit, but 
it is a pass. It does do a job better than a previous car, and there'll be times that you will play Shivia to the search, a Cheeto Cadet, and it does a better job, but again, it's not going to set the metagame alight, it's just cute. Next up, we have another rather beautiful uh, full art and lightning. We have the Man in Black. So, spoilers, it might be Golbisk. And there has been some questions around this card's effect, and I just want to say that it works the same way as the kind of Lanny, your Mind Flare, or your Sedan cards that basically you RFG and then you can cast it. So this does mean when you cast one of the summons that you remove through his effect from his attacking or on entry, when you cast it, it will go to the break zone again. So technically you could um, swing, get the summon back, sorry, okay, um, and on entry, use the summon, cast that summon, and then when you swing again, you can use the remove it from game to then cast it again at a different point. This can be quite good for protecting key summons such as Amaterasu from cards such as Mist Dragon um, I I feel it's got quite it will be much better on a slower meta game. Being able to reuse summons multiple times will be definitely useful. The fact of you can also, when you cast a summon, you can stop a forward attacking or blocking. It can be used both offensively and defensively. Um, it can really help you push for game. Quite often casting an offen offensive summon. Uh, for example, I, I, I seem to really have leaned into Fire Lightning here. Um, but being able to, for example, go move from play Brynhildr, cast Brynhildr, kill one forward, stop another forward from blocking, could be quite a aggressive way of kind of helping you push for a game. And um, the fact of he's basically giving you additional cards in your hand, I, I quite like that aspect of him. But he is quite slow. Um, and because he has a 5 CP forward, you are going to need to get some value out. In fact, his 90 means he won't die straight away to Namaterasu. Means you can hopefully get some value out of him, even if he does get his uh, on his entry negated. Um, I'm going to say 4 out of 5. A really strong card for Lightning, um, especially when used in between elements. Um, I think for Wind Lightning it's going to be really really powerful decks utilising Azura or Chocobo or Alexander multiple times um, and if they can kind of build up the field and be able to stop a lot of force from attacking that could be quite interesting. Um, he is category 4 so that will play into a couple of card effects. Um, so yeah, I, I think he is very good, perhaps a little slow, but as games drag on long, he will certifiably help. Next up we have Solaire. Now Solaire, I think I've mentioned how much I love modal things and she does lots. So I'll just tailor up what you need um, for the one, one CP body, on entry, dull something, that's cute, does what it needs to do, if you pay one lightning, lightning CP after that, you can break a 2 kiss left forward, that's really good for hitting things like Palamporum, uh, Rydia, uh, the 2, two CP summon, uh, counter Rydia, um, Kite, Pinello, it's just really kind of cost efficient, cute effect. Or if you pay 3 lightning CP, keep on as it has to be, 
exactly free like the CP, so it's not as great in dual element decks unless you pay probably at that point one other lightning backup and one card from hand. Um, you deal something 9,000, so again, you're hitting Barret or a Cloud straight away. Um, 9k is a really good number to hit. It, you've got lots of options for it. Um, it can be searched by an element by Diana, the 3 CP Warrior Darks backup that searches a 1 CP forward. It's always good. It's FFB, which is kind of getting great support at the moment. Um, so yeah, I, I'm going to give her 3.5, kind of what Lightning's looking for. It hits a couple of different areas quite well, worth comes to worth, it's just that cheap bodies flying out to dull something to help you push for game. Next up we have Sisney, and do apologise for the slightly different font that I've used that, but she, if Turks get better, she fits in perfectly. Um, basically as you enter the field, discard one card and you deal it CP required to reach your cast. So that is quite nice in the fact of being able to get rid of cards that you couldn't use. If they're expensive, you're going to do more damage. As long as you discard a Turk though, it's going to be doing 7k. I think the cheapest Turk is 2 CP. So you're doing 7,000 plus, which is a good number. At damage reach, you gain haste and brave and 2k power. So, like, mid-game, a 7k hasty brave forward that's going to kill something in entry is great. Um, solid 4.5 out of 5. She's everything you'd want for a Turk. Um, I just think the, the rest of the deck still needs to come up to her level, but this is exactly what there's so many decks that could be are absolutely screaming for support like this, and yeah, fantastic addition. Next up, we have Jack, and Jack frustrates me. I, uh, in my previous video with uh, Travis Pfeiffer earlier this week, I said, Oh, I'd love cadets to get support, and they got cards, they're not good, they got cards. Um, yeah, I, it's just too expensive. Um, it's 3 CP, it probably should have been less. Um, I do have to say, for a sealed environment, either dealing 10k to a forward, which will be good against some of the, the bulkier cards of the set, for example an XF that has managed to get 10 cards RFG'd, um, or him doing a further year damage is good in sealed environments. In standard play, it's just too slow, it doesn't have haste or anything. He's 3 CP 5k, so he can be hit by Brynhildr. I think I'm honestly going to give it a 1. Like, it doesn't do anything to turn the plays, it needs to be comboed into something. It just isn't. It's, it's just nowhere near enough where the game needs to be in. Yeah, I, I, I'm really sad because I kind of do want cadet support, but this isn't it. This isn't it. Next up we have Knight. Um, now this proper pack filler. Um, and pff, I'm just going to straight up to it's a 1 out of 5. Okay, it's 8 when it swings, it can't be tarted uh, when it's active. Yeah. I might even go as low as a zero point. It's just rubbish. <laughs> it, it, it will not see play at this stage of the game. It's just rubbish. So we have Knight, and I, I've seen a lot of complete hatred of these cards. I'm slightly more positive to it. Um, it you really need to have taken a point of damage uh, to get the most value out of it and I know the wind one is far better uh, with it milling four cards than you've taken the damage, even milling two cards is quite powerful, you've gotten rid of a full turn from them. Um, but 
Dealing 8k for a single tap off an alien backup isn't bad. It's category 5, so that's cute. <clears throat> uh, notably, it can be searched off as Sildra, so I, I don't hate Knight. Um, it probably is a, a 1.5. It's definitely in a sealed environment. It's really good I think being able to kill a lot of the fours that don't hit 9k it should always be appreciated um, but I I think it might yeah I think it might just be a little too slow for the current game but again for the category 5 there's quite a lot of water lightning kind of like sub kind of Synergies, yeah. Actually, I might bump up to do it. It's like the bare minimum for a pass, but I, I could see it not being played at all. Next up, we have our third stunning full art is Hooded Man, and this is actually quite funny because I've just kind of clicked now that all the Japanese uh, question mark jobs have four question marks, while the English ones have three question marks. That's weird. Um, so you can't play Kane at the same time as him. And he has a very wind-like effect. Uh, when an end of the field, if you remove a hooded man or a cane from play, you activate all your backups and draw one card. So basically it is kind of like starter uh, cane. Uh, starter pain from Opus 1 of being a free body but this is one that really allows you to go on the offensive and um, you quite often actually get more than you put in um, if you're able to pay one cp and then play him you do get your five backups back um, which is quite nice you replenish everything in that regard yeah he is amazing. Um, there is quite a few canes and lightning. You can get rid of one copy of them earlier on. Only thing that does, um, I am not a big fan of, is there is a lot of remove from play kind of spots in the game at the moment. So it is a little worrying, but just the sheer power of the effect and getting a hasty body for free while possibly going plus in CP should never be looked down upon. I I have to give it I think if I some people are absolutely uh, high on this card. I I think it's absolutely great but yeah it is just a just a good free body. I am um, and it may, may not be able to carry lightning much further, but as long as you keep getting good cards, this will see play. Plus, beautiful full art once again. Next up, we have Yugiri, and I mentioned Yugiri earlier on. Um, as she is a searcher, um, can really help you probably condense your backup. Um, the crystal backup for lightning was a ninja so that is a really good sign um, so she can possibly work quite well with uh, the uh, ninja decks of old but uh, I don't know I think it's just quite cute her being able to get backups and if you do overload with ninjas you can discard two of them and break something um, exactly what you want for a 3 CP card. I I think again it's, it's going to get a yeah I think a 3.5 out of 5 it's a, a fair spot for her um, the better ninjas get the better she'll get um, at worst she's just a, a good searcher for backups. Next up we have Liart and Liart yeah, that's also uh, somewhere between 0 and 1. You can pick your favourite score out of that. 
and her effect is just she gets bigger when something goes into the break zone that's it nothing of note here however Dragoon is a fantastic addition to Dragoons um, basically you choose one job standard unit in your break zone you can add it to hand if it's a lightning forward of course three or less um, of note that can actually get a red mage um, that we've seen earlier on or just in general Dragoons I think the key one would be the Opus I want to say 11 full art Dragoon the one that you reveal Dragoons in hand and it gets to break and gain haste is a great partner for this um, any Dragoon backups are really useful for Dragoon it allows Aelith to be more uh, allow you Aelith to get you more backups um, Brea again counts on card name Dragoon so be able to have cards that are untargetable through uh, Freya uh, that are counted for Freya is great I, I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 because it's exactly what that archetype needs and okay it doesn't shape the metal like I've said for Loctar this is such great support for that archetype if they get a few more cards here or there they could slowly creep back into being a really top deck again now we have two starter cards um, from the oh, uh, uh, Final Fantasy 4 starter deck and I think these are the best of the bunch if I'm honest um, Edge is a kind of very fair ninja if you've got four category four forwards choose one forward and break it good clean simple fun um, I really like a special um, of which you remove them from play and then play them onto the field again uh, again you can just break something again it can be fun if you target something and then you get to target something if they target him you can fizzle it with effect otherwise you can attack use the special yeah he's good I think he's maybe a bit too highly costed but it's quite easy to hit then uh, kind of four category four includes himself there is quite a couple of lightning category four characters including the zenith backup and um, so if you're playing like wind lightning that's so easy to hit uh, including you've got like cecil ford that um, plays a f kind of category four well plays any four cost or less character but cash before so you can get the backup reactivation yeah I create a five he does a good job of bringing something it's not going to set the world of light but um, he will be there to help you get some removal cash before is up and coming definitely worth keeping in mind I think he's the best one of the best of the bunch and finally we have this is going to be one of the full arts again lightning got some I think it may have got the best full arts of the the opus I, I want to argue and um, we have Kane now, I, I'm not a big fan of how specific his own entry ability is of getting back one water category 4 character um, but there is kind of facts of um, in water lightning this does allow for some rather interesting uh, kind of searching looks because you can go the Sarah backup that searches for the king prince or princess you can then search for king of Bermesia to search a dragoon which you can search this cane and that can get back a, a porum a leonora um, a few other good targets um, back and because he is calf named Kane he can be RFG'd for the Hooded Man mentioned a couple of cards ago uh, if you don't control any other forwards other than Kane which I think is a bit weak 
um, he gains 1k power and haste. All in all, yeah, he's fine. I think him being a actually good and actually kind of interesting card named Kane, he has the X burst, um, worked in a couple of engines in Water Lightning, really has brought my opinion of it up originally, I was kind of a bit lukewarm, um, seeing a couple of cards um, kind of post releases made me feel a lot more favourable. Um, I think I still do have to give him a, a, a rating of 3 out of 5. He's not, again, he's not going to set the world alight, but he, he does have his engines he, he fits in and works well with. And I think that's all you can ask for. Now, I've spent 45 minutes talking about these cards, and I do hope you have enjoyed some of my thoughts and opinions on these cards. I hope you watch the rest of our sets views that should be coming up in the next day or so. But that's enough for me. Thank you for watching and I hope you are having a wonderful day.